Now let's look at the following example where we have the integral of a rational function um, that includes a repeated irreducible quadratic. So here I have the integral of 1 over x times x squared plus 4 squared. So I do have a rational function. Um, it is proper. So I can go ahead and write down the partial fraction decomposition form. So I have 1 over x times x squared plus 4 squared, which will be equal to a over x plus for the simple linear term, I have that a over x. The x squared plus 4 squared is the irreducible um, quadratic because x squared plus 4 can't be factored anymore and repeated because I have it raised to that squared power. So this will be bx plus c over x squared plus 4 plus dx plus e over x squared plus 4 squared. Okay, so we have five unknowns um, in this particular example, unlike several of the other ones where we only had three. Okay, so I know that the next step um, in solving for those unknowns is to clear um, fractions. So again, remember we're multiplying both sides by whatever our denominator is. So I have this times x times x squared plus 4 squared. Okay, so what is this going to give us? Well, on the left-hand side, I'll just have 1. When I take a over x times this quantity, the x's will cancel, and I'll have a times x squared plus 4 squared. Then I'll have bx plus c. And remember, when you've got um, these quadratic terms, your numerator is this linear type thing instead of a constant, so it does have two pieces. So when you're doing the, the multiplying, you want to make sure you put that in parentheses, so you distribute the bx plus c times, in this case, x squared plus 4, um, just one copy of that, and then also times the x here. So I have x and x squared plus 4. Okay, but we want to remember our parentheses. Then I'll lastly have dx plus c. Again, in parentheses, the x squared plus 4 squared cancel, and I just have x there. Okay, so now we want to think about what method we want to use to solve for a, b, c, and d, excuse me, and e. Um, so I could plug in five different values of x to help me solve for a, b, c, d, e. Um, in some of our other examples, it was more convenient a little bit shorter to, to plug in those different values. Um, in this case, I think it's actually going to be a little easier to get the, um, the system of equations from um, looking at matching the, the coefficients. Okay, so we have to do a little bit of algebra to figure out what those coefficients are, but you'll see that our system of equations um, comes out to be not too bad in this case. So I do have to do the algebra of multiplying some things out. So x squared plus 4 squared is x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 16. Then I'll have my bx plus c here times x cubed plus 4x. And then I'll have this dx squared plus ex. Okay. So what do we have next here? Well, we're going to have ax to the fourth plus 8a x squared plus 16a, and then I'll have plus bx to the fourth plus 4bx squared plus cx cubed plus 4cx plus dx squared plus ex. Okay, so you know with these problems that require lengthy algebra, it's easy to make a, a small mistake early on, so you just want to be really careful keeping track of your coefficients. Um, making sure you're copying things correctly, using parentheses, distributing everything, um, all those things that are important and being careful with algebra. Okay, so we've got this all expanded out. Now I want to look for my like terms. So I have an ax to the fourth here. Do I have any other x to the fourth? Well, I have this um, bx to the fourth. So I have a plus b x to the fourth. Okay, so what about our x cubed terms? Well, I have a cx cubed, and it doesn't look like I have any other x cubes. So we just have cx cubed. So what else here? Let's grab another color. So my x squared terms, I have this 8ax squared. I also have um, 4bx squared and dx squared. So I have 8a plus 4b plus d. 
x squared. Okay, so now I'm just looking for my x terms and then my constant terms. So for my x terms, I say I have 4cx and ex, so I have plus 4c plus ex. And then lastly, we just have the um, 16a here. So plus 16a. Okay. So now remember with this method, we are going to equate the coefficients of our powers of x on the right with the coefficients of powers of x on the left. Okay. And one reason our um, equations, excuse me, our system of equations that we're going to set up will be um, come rather nice is that I have zero as the coefficient of everything but the constant term on the left. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at our system of equations here. Notice I'm going to have to match coefficients for x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x and x to the zero. So for x to the fourth, there are zero copies of x to the fourth on the left and a plus b copies on the right. For x cubed, I have zero x cubes on the left and c x cubes on the right. So see, right away we already know what the value of c is. For um, x squared here, zero copies of x squared on the left. And I have 8a plus 4b plus d copies of x squared on the right. For x, I have zero x's on the left, 4c plus e x's on the right. And again, for the constant term, okay, we think of that as the coefficient of x to the zero. It's just one on the left, and then 16a on the right. Okay, so out of this, we can already get several of our values. So notice that, of course, c is equal to zero. Okay, if c is zero, that means e is also zero. And I see that since one is equal to 16a, a is equal to 1 over 16. Okay, so what about our other values? Well, I can plug 1 over 16 here in for a. So 0 plus 1, whoops, 0 equals 1 over 16 plus b. Well, that means that b is negative 1 over 16. Okay, and so now with those four different values, I can figure out what d is going to be. So notice I'm going to have 0 equals 8 times a, or 8 over 16, or 1 half, plus 4b, so that would be negative 4 over 16, or negative 1 fourth, okay, plus d. So what is this going to give me? Um, I should have... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this will be, uh, let's see, um, if I get a common denominator here, 2 fourths plus negative 1 fourth will be 1 fourth. That should make d equal to negative 1 fourth. Okay, so that wasn't too bad for getting our values for a, b, c, and d, um, and e. Um, and fortunately, this is going to simplify our what we're actually going to have to integrate because we do have some zero coefficients that showed up. Okay, so what is it that we have to integrate here? So we have our integral of 1 over x times x squared plus 4 squared dx will be the integral of, well, we had um, a over x, so we'll have 1 over 16 over x, plus it was bx plus c over x squared plus 4, so my bx is negative 1 over 16x. Or let's see, how else should I write that? Let me write this just as negative x over 16. Um, and this is all over my x squared plus 4. This was plus c for the numerator, but c is 0. And then for my last term, I'm going to have a denominator here of x squared plus 4 squared. And the numerator was going to be um, dx plus e, so that'll be negative x over 4 plus e or plus 0. Okay. So we just have to integrate each of those three different terms. Let's pull out some of those constants and see what we have. So notice for the first term, I'm going to have 1 over 16 times log of the absolute value of x. Then I'll have minus 1 over 16, the integral of x 
over x squared plus 4 dx, and then minus 1 fourth, the integral of x over x squared plus 4 squared dx. Okay, so notice for these two integrals, a u substitution will work on both of those where u would be equal to x squared plus 4. So we'll go over here and let u be x squared plus 4. So our du would be 2x dx, so I have 1 half du equals x dx. So let's see what this gives us. So our x over x squared plus 4, the x dx will be 1 half du. This will be all over u. I have minus this 1 fourth. x dx again will be 1 half du, but this will be all over u squared. Okay. So what are we going to have when we take each of these integrals? Whoops. Well, this is going to be 1 over 16, log of the absolute value of x. We'll have minus 1 over 32, log of the absolute value of u. And then we'll have minus 1 eighth, the integral of 1 over u squared. So remember, that's the integral of u to the negative 2. So that will be u to the negative 1 over negative 1. Okay, plus c. So we can go ahead and clean this up and replace our u's in terms of x. So we'll have our integral of 1 over x, x squared plus 4 squared dx is equal to 1 over 16 log of the absolute value of x minus 1 over 32 log of x squared plus 4. Again, I can drop the absolute values specifically on the x squared plus 4 piece because that's always positive. Then I'll end up with plus 1 eighth times, because these we have a negative and a negative, that'll become positive, times my 1 over u, or 1 over x squared plus 4. And that'll be plus c. So that's our final answer in this example.